In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve linear equalities. At the same time, we're going to talk about how to graph it on a number line. But let's go over some basics. So let's say we have two numbers, 5 and 8. What symbol would you use to show the relationship of the two numbers? Would you use the less than symbol, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to? What symbol should go between the 5 and the 8? Would you say it's A, B, C, or D? The answer is A. 5 is less than 8. Now, what if we reverse the situation? Let's say if we use negative 5 and negative 8. What symbol goes in between here? Now, to understand this one, Let's understand something about 5 and 8. If you plot those numbers in a number line, 5 is to the left of 8. Let's say 0 is over here. So on the left side, those values are, they have a lower value. On the right side, the numbers have a higher or greater value. So 5 is less than 8. So we use the less than symbol. Now what about negative numbers? What's the situation there? So let's say if we have a number line and negative 5 is going to be here and this is going to be negative 8. Notice that negative 8 is to the left of negative 5, which means negative 8 is less than negative 5. So what symbol should we use? If negative 8 is less than negative 5, that means negative 5 is greater than negative 8 if you read it from left to right. So we have to use the symbol that corresponds to answer choice B. So notice that going from the first scenario to the second scenario, all you need to do is multiply both sides by negative 1. And whenever you multiply or even divide by a negative number, the inequality changes sign. And make sure you understand that because you need to know that when solving the linear inequalities. Now let's go over some other examples. What symbol goes between 7 and 4 and also negative 7 and negative 4? Well, we know that 7 is greater than 4, so we have to use the greater than symbol, which means negative 7 has to be less than negative 4, because all you got to do is multiply both sides by negative 1, and you'll get this expression. But you need to reverse the inequality. Now, let's talk about how to graph inequalities on a number line. So let's say we have x is greater than 3. How can we plot this on a number line? So we're going to put 0 in the middle. 3 is somewhere to the right of 0. All the way to the right is positive infinity and negative infinity is all the way to the left. And you could add more numbers if you want to, but these are the basic elements that I need in order to do what I'm about to do. Now, to show that x is greater than 3, we need an open circle. If x was greater than and equal to 3 at the same time, we would use a closed circle. But it's only greater than 3, not equal to it. So we need to use an open circle. And because it's greater than, we're going to shade to the right. Now, how do we represent this solution in interval notation? All we need to do is read the shaded region from left to right. It starts at 3, and it ends in infinity. So it's going to be 3, comma, infinity. Now, because we have an open circle here, we need to use parentheses. For infinity, you should always use parentheses. So this is how you represent the solution in what is known as interval notation. Let's try another example. Let's say we have x is greater than or equal to 2. So how can we plot this on a number line? So here's 0. 2 is somewhere to the right of 0. All the way to the right is positive infinity. All the way to the left is negative infinity. Now, because it's greater than but also equal to based on 
the underline that we see here, we need to use a closed circle at 2 as opposed to an open circle because it's greater than and equal to 2 at the same time. Now, because it's greater than 2, we still need to shade to the right. If it was less than 2, we would shade to the left. Now, an interval notation, you need to read it from left to right. So it's going to be 2 to infinity. Now, don't forget to use parentheses when dealing with infinity. But this time, we need to use a bracket symbol next to the 2 because the solution includes 2. x is greater than or equal to 2. So anytime you have a closed circle, make sure to use a bracket associated with that number. Try these two. Let's say x is less than 1, and also x is less than or equal to negative 3. Feel free to pause the video and try those examples. So starting with the first one, let's say this is 0, this is 1, here we have infinity, and negative infinity. So because it's less than, we need to shade to the left. Now it doesn't equal to 1, so we need to use an open circle. And so this is how we plot it on a number line. Now how can we represent the solution using interval notation? So once again, you need to read it from left to right. The blue shaded region, it starts on the left from negative infinity, and it stops at 1. So we have negative infinity, let me redraw that again, and 1. Now with infinity, we're always going to use a parentheses symbol. With 1, it does not include 1. We have an open circle at 1, so we're going to use an open circle, I mean a parentheses as well. So this is the solution in interval notation, negative infinity to 1. Now for the next one, negative 3 is the point of interest. So this time, it's x is less than or equal to negative 3. So we need to use a closed circle. And we're going to shade to the left because it's less than negative 3. Now, to write the answer using interval notation, read in the graph from left to right, the shaded region starts at negative infinity and stops at negative 3. So it's going to be negative infinity to negative 3. But because it includes negative 3, we have a closed circle at negative 3. We're going to use a bracket symbol. And so that's how you can graph an inequality on a number line and how you could represent the solution using interval notation. Now what about something that looks like this? So this is known as a compound inequality. But what is it saying? Well, let's break it up into two parts. If we focus on the left side, we could see what it says. Negative 1 is less than x. Or if we reverse it, it's the same as x is greater than negative 1, if you read it this way. It's like reading it this way for the first part or reading it this way for the second part. So negative 1 is less than x means the same thing as x is greater than negative 1. Now, if we look at the second part of the inequality, we don't need to reverse it. We can just read it the way it is. It's always good to put x on the left side. So this is saying x is less than or equal to 4. I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back. So whenever you see an inequality like this, you want to read the left side like this. x is greater than negative 1. And it's also saying x is less than or equal to 4. With that in mind, we can now plot the inequality. So here's 0. Here's 4, and here is negative 1. So let's focus on the first part. x is greater than negative 1. So we have an open circle, and we're going to shade to the right. 
Now the second part is saying x is less than or equal to 4. So it includes 4, which means we have a closed circle, but it's also less than 4. So notice that x is between negative 1 and 4. So we have an open circle and a closed circle. So how can we represent the solution in interval notation? So the shaded region starts at negative 1 on the left side and ends at 4 on the right side. So it's negative 1 to 4. At negative 1, we have an open circle. So we're going to use a set of parentheses. And at 4, we have a closed circle. So this is the answer. It's between negative 1 and 4. Now let's work on another example. Let's say that x is less than or equal to negative 2, or x is greater than 3. So here we have another compound inequality. Go ahead and try this one. So let's plot it on a number line first. So here we have 0, negative 2, 3, infinity, and negative infinity. So let's start with the one on the left side. So x is less than or equal to negative 2, which means we need a closed circle. And we're going to shade it to the left. Now, for the next one, x is greater than 3. So we're going to use an open circle. And we're going to shade it to the right. So now let's write the answer in interval notation. So reading it from left to right, it's going to be negative infinity to negative 2. Now, because we have a closed circle at negative 2, we're going to use a bracket symbol. Now for the next one, reading it from left to right, it's 3 to positive infinity. Now we have an open circle at 3, so we need to use parentheses. Now whenever you have an or symbol, you need to connect these two regions. And so all you need to do is put a union symbol between them. So this is the solution in interval notation. Now let's work on some examples where we're going to solve a few inequalities. So consider this one. x plus 4 is greater than 9. How can we solve the inequality? Well, what we need to do is we need to get the x variable by itself. So we can do this by subtracting both sides by 4. 4 and negative 4, they're going to cancel. And then we could bring down the x. So we have x is greater than 9 minus 4, which is 5. So once you have this answer, you know what to do. You can plot the solution on a number line. So x is greater than 5, but not equal to it. So we're going to have an open circle shaded to the right. And the answer in interval notation is going to be 5 to infinity. So you can write your answer like this, or you could represent it on a number line or use an interval notation. Here's another example. x minus 6 is less than or equal to 3. Go ahead and try that. So to get x by itself, we need to add 6 to both sides. 3 plus 6 is 9. So we have x is less than or equal to 9. So now we just got to plot that on a number line. So x is less than 9, but it's equal to it. So we need a closed circle shaded to the left. In interval notation, the answer is going to be negative infinity to 9. But it's going to include 9, so don't forget to use the brackets. Here's another one. 5 minus x is less than or equal to 4. Feel free to pause the video and try that one. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to subtract both sides by 5. So this is going to give me negative x is less than or equal to 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. Now at this point, you can either multiply or divide both sides by negative 1. If we multiply both sides by negative 1, negative x times negative 1 becomes positive x. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 on the right. 
Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number, you need to switch the inequality. You need to flip it. So now it becomes x is greater than or equal to 1. So at this point, we can plot it. So we're going to use a closed circle at 1. And because it's greater than 1, we're going to shade to the right. So it's going to be from 1 to infinity using a bracket symbol at 1. Now, from this point forward, I'm not going to focus on graphing the inequality on a number line because you've seen plenty of examples on how to do that. So let's focus on solving the inequality. So here's the next example. 3x is greater than 18. How can we solve it? All we need to do is get x by itself. And since the 3 is multiplied to the x, we need to perform the opposite of multiplication, which is division. 3x divided by 3 is x. And 18 divided by 3 is 6. So the answer is x is greater than 6. Now, what about this example? Negative 2 over 3x is less than 12. What should we do in this case? In a situation like this, what you could do is you could begin by multiplying both sides by 3. On the left, the 3s will cancel. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So you're just going to have negative 2x. On the right, 12 times 3 is 36. So now we can divide both sides by negative 2. And don't forget to change the inequality because we divided by a negative number. 36 divided by negative 2 is negative 18. So the answer, x is greater than negative 18. Now, before we continue on to the next example, I think it's important to understand how to check your work and also to understand what your answer actually means. Let's go back to this example. We said that 3x is greater than 18. And so x is greater than 6. So what does this mean? This means that if you choose a value for x that's greater than 6, this statement becomes a true statement. So for instance, pick a number that's greater than 6. Let's say 7. If x is 7 and we plug it into this expression, we're going to have 3 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21. And 21 is greater than 18, so that's a true statement. Now, if we pick a number that's less than 6, let's say if x is equal to 5. So we have 3 times 5, which is 15. 15 is not greater than 18, so that's a false statement. And so that's how you can check your work. So if you get an answer and you feel maybe it's not correct, Try picking numbers based on this answer and see if it works in the original expression. And that's how you can know for sure if your inequality is correct or not. Here's another one. Let's say we have 3 over 4x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 9. Go ahead and solve that inequality. So what's the first thing that we should do? I recommend subtracting both sides by 3. So this will give us 3 over 4x is greater than or equal to 6. So we've seen this situation before. What we can do to get rid of the fraction is multiply both sides by 4. So these numbers will cancel. On the left, we'll have 3x. On the right, 6 times 4 is 24. So the last thing we need to do is divide both sides by 3. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. So our answer is x is greater than or equal to 8. Now let's try some multi-step inequalities. So here's one, 4x plus 3 is less than 7x minus 9. Go ahead and try that. So what I recommend doing is subtracting both sides by 4x. If you subtract both sides by 7x, you're going to get negative 3x on the left side. So it's better to subtract by the smaller of these two. Now I'm going to add 9 to both sides to avoid negative numbers. So this will cancel. 
and that will cancel. 3 plus 9 is 12, and 7x minus 4x is 3x. So now I need to divide both sides by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So this means that 4 is less than x, or you can write it this way, x is greater than 4. If you reverse 4 and x, make sure to also reverse the inequality sign. Because let's say if you're going to the right and you reverse it once, when you reverse it the second time, you'll be going in the same direction. So you need to do like a double reverse kind of thing. Now here's another one. 5 minus 2 times x plus 3 is greater than 4 plus 3 times x plus 2. So this is another multi-step process or problem. Go ahead and try this one. Now, if you have parentheses, I recommend distributing the number in front of the parentheses first. So this is going to be 5, and let's distribute the negative 2. So negative 2 times x, that's negative 2x. And then we have negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. Now, let's do the same with the 3. 3 times x is 3x. And then we have 3 times 2, which is 6. Now let's combine like terms. So 5 plus negative 6, that's going to be negative 1. And here we can combine 4 and 6, which is 10. Now let's go ahead and add 2x to both sides. At the same time, well, let's just do that for now. So we're going to have negative 1 is greater than 10 plus 3x plus 2x is 5x. Now we need to move this 10 to the other side. And the way to do that is to subtract both sides by 10. So we're going to get negative 11 is greater than 5x. Now we can also write that 5x is less than negative 11. And now we could divide both sides by 5. And so this is going to give us the answer. So x is less than negative 11 over 5. And so that's it for this problem. Here's another one. Let's say if we have 3x, which is greater than 14 minus x, divided by 2. How can we solve this particular inequality? What do you think we need to do? To get rid of the fraction, I recommend multiplying both sides by 2. And so on the left side, we have 2 times 3x, which is 6x. On the right side, we just have 14 minus x. So now we can add x to both sides. Negative x plus x, they, they're going to cancel. 6x plus x, or 6x plus 1x. 6 plus 1 is 7. And so we have 7x is greater than 14. Now, let's divide both sides by 7. So 14 divided by 7 is 2. And this is it. x is greater than 2. So that's the answer. Here's another example that we could work on. Let's say we have 5x minus 3 divided by 4. We're going to say it's less than 3x minus 7 divided by 3. So go ahead and solve the inequality. Now one way you can do this is you can cross multiply. Or if you want to do it one step at a time, we can multiply both sides by 3 just to get rid of the fraction on the right. And so right now we'll have 3 times 5x minus 3 over 4, which is less than 3x minus 7. Next, we can multiply both sides by 4. And so these will cancel. And so we have 3 times 5x minus 3, which is less than 4 times 3x minus 7. Now let's go ahead and distribute the 3. 3 times 5x is 15x. And 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And then we have 4 times 3x, which is 12x. And 4 times negative 7, so that's negative 28. 
Now let's subtract both sides by 12x, and at the same time, let's add 9 to both sides. So 15 minus 12 is 3, and then negative 28 plus 9, and that's going to be negative 19. So our last step is to divide both sides by 3. And so the final answer is x is less than 19 over 3. And so that's it for this problem. Now let's try a problem with many fractions. So let's say we have 2 over 3 times x plus 5. We're going to say it's greater than 3 over 4 times x minus 1 over 5. Go ahead and try this problem. So what do you think we should do if we have all these fractions? What I recommend is eliminating all the fractions. So we need to multiply both sides by a number that will eliminate all the fractions. And you can find the least common denominator, or you could find just any common denominator that will work. A quick and simple way to find a common denominator that's going to work is to multiply the three denominators. Now, this method will sometimes give you the, common, the least common denominator, but not always. But it doesn't matter, because any common denominator will work. So this is just a quick and simple way to eliminate all the fractions. Now, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 times 5 is 60. So I'm going to multiply every term by 60. And this is going to clear away all the fractions. So what is 60 times 2 thirds? So what's 2 thirds times 60? The best way to do it is to divide first and then multiply. 60 divided by 3 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. Now if you did 60 times 2, that's 120. 120 divided by 3 will still give you the same answer, 40. So now we have 40x and we don't have a fraction. Now what's 60 times 5? 6 times 5 is 30, so 60 times 5 is 300. You just need to add the 0. Now, 60 times 3 fourths. 60 divided by 4 is 15, and 15 times 3 is 45. So 3 fourths of 60 is 45. Now, 60 times 1 fifth, or 60 divided by 5, that's 12. So now, we no longer have any fractions, which is good. So now we could finish the problem. So I'm going to subtract both sides by 40x. And then I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So this is going to give me 312. And on the right side, I'm going to have 5x. So the last thing that I need to do is divide by 5. So 312 over 5 is greater than x, or we can say that x is less than 312 over 5. And so that's it for this problem. This is the answer. Now this one is going to be a little different than the other examples. So how can we solve a compound inequality? What would you do? The way I think of it is like an equation with three sides. Typically, when you have an equation, there's usually just two sides to the equation. But in fact, you could have multiple sides in an equation. You can have three sides, you can have four sides, you can have an infinite number of sides. But we're used to seeing just two sides of an equation. And whenever you're balancing an equation, whatever you do to the left side, you must do to the right side. So if you have an equation with three sides, whatever you do to the left, you must also do to the middle and to the right to make sure that the value stays the same. So if you keep that in mind, this problem is not going to be difficult. So we need to get x by itself, as always. Let's begin by subtracting all three sides by 7. So this is going to disappear. In the middle, all we have left over is 3x. On the left side, we have 4 minus 7, which is negative 3. On the right side, 22 minus 7, that's 15. 
Now, to get x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 3. I mean, all three sides. So on the left side, we have negative 3 divided by 3. That's negative 1. In the middle, these will cancel, so we're going to get x. And on the right side, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So x is between negative 1 and 5. x is greater than negative 1, but it's less than or equal to 5. And so that's it for this particular problem. And that's it for this video as well. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.